The heart is a pump which circulates blood through the lungs and the rest of the body. Four heart valves make sure that the blood flows in the correct direction. As the red cells move around the body, they deliver oxygen to the tissues. Then, having unloaded its cargo of oxygen, the blood returns to the right atrium and is moved on to the right ventricle, which pumps this oxygen-depleted blood onto the lungs. While the red cells are travelling through the lungs, picking up oxygen, they release carbon dioxide, an important waste product of metabolism. This gas diffuses from the blood into the air sacs of the lungs and is removed from the body in breathing. Thus, the red cells have two functions, to pick up oxygen and deliver it to the tissues and to rid the body of excess carbon dioxide through the lungs. The blood, returning from the lungs in the pulmonary veins and replenished with oxygen, passes into the left atrium and then into the left ventricle, from where it is pumped out into the general body circulation. Many operations cannot be carried out on a beating heart, but the heart-lung machine allows the heart to be stopped temporarily for surgery. The heart-lung machine keeps the patient alive by pumping and oxygenating the blood, effectively bypassing the heart and lungs. The term on bypass is used to describe the patient who is supported by the heart-lung machine. The heart-lung machine consists of a system of highly specialized pumps and monitors. Adding to this is an assembly of sterile tubing called the circuit, which joins together various pieces of equipment. To discourage clotting, the patient receives an injection of heparin prior to going on bypass. Special tubes, called cannulas, are placed in the arteries and veins around the heart. These cannulas connect the patient to the heart-lung machine. This allows the blood to flow continuously from the patient to the heart-lung machine and then back to the patient. Once the cannulas are inserted, they are connected to the circuit and bypass is initiated. As blood flows around the circuit, it travels through several important pieces of equipment. The first is called the reservoir. Here the blood is filtered of air and particulate matter. The reservoir also acts as a buffer to allow matching of blood entering and leaving the patient. From the reservoir, the blood passes to a pump. This provides flow equal to that of a normally beating heart. From the pump, the blood travels to the heat exchanger. This allows the temperature of the blood to be controlled, which in turn controls the body's temperature. From the heat exchanger, it passes to the oxygenator, which serves as an artificial lung. The oxygenator consists of numerous hollow fibers. The walls of each fiber have multiple holes. The purple deoxygenated blood flows around these tubes, whose holes are big enough to allow oxygen gas to enter, but too small to allow red blood cells to escape. The oxygenated blood leaves the oxygenator and passes through a filter designed to remove any small bubbles of air that may have entered the blood before it flows back to the patient. The blood, filtered and with its oxygen replenished by the oxygenator, is now returned to the circulation by means of a cannula inserted into the aorta, the largest artery of the body. At this stage, the surgeon needs to stop the heart in order to open it. First, a clamp is placed across the aorta. The surgeon then places a small cannula between this clamp and the heart, through which heart paralyzing or cardioplegic solution is injected at intervals. This solution causes the heart to slow and finally stops it beating. The patient is now completely dependent on the heart-lung machine. Once the surgeon has completed the operation on the heart, the flow of cardioplegic solution is gradually stopped, restoring the heartbeat, and the clamp blocking the flow of blood to the heart is removed, so that the heart will once again receive normal oxygenated blood. This washes out the cardioplegic solution, and the heart starts to beat again. The flow of blood to the heart-lung machine is gradually reduced as the patient's own heart is allowed to take over providing flow to the circulation. When this process has been completed, the patient is said to be off bypass. After a short wait to ensure that the heart-lung machine will not be required again, the cannulas are removed and the final stages of the operation are completed. In the last 50 years, progress in heart surgery has been truly spectacular thanks to two main developments, 
the realization that the heart could be stopped for surgery and then restarted, and the invention of the heart-lung machine itself. This constantly evolving technology promises a bright future for many people with heart disorders previously thought to be incurable. <laughs>